Hello all you hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? It's Big Porky here, the voice of hardcore boxing. Uh, Josh Warrington, what next? Now, let's just back up a little bit. Let's have a little look at his career because I had a bit of stick over the last couple of days uh, for having Josh Warrington number 11 in my pound for pound list. Uh, sometimes we have to create a bit of controversy and get your people talking because if I put a video out and I put Josh Warrington in my top five, which is probably where he should be because he's undefeated world champion like the other four, you know, Tyson, Billy Joe, uh, Callum Smith and Josh Taylor. You know, he's, he's up there with those guys and they're the top five in the UK, but I had him 11, caused a bit of controversy. Got you talking, but if I had done that, nobody would have said anything, would they? So, but he's basically top five, isn't he? Josh Wannington, uh, good little fighter, got a high punch volume. He's probably the fittest kid in UK boxing. Everybody knows he can do 15 rounds all day long. His uh, fitness is extraordinary. Right? He's a freak of nature. But he's not a massive puncher. Seven stoppages out, 30 wins. And he's had his last the, out of his last 13 fights, 11 of them have been in Leeds, so it's a bit like Ricky Hatton in Manchester, isn't it? He's a hometown fighter. The other two fights that he's not had, that weren't in Leeds, one were in Manchester against Frampton. Good win, he weren't the favourite in that. The other one were in, were in Germany on a Carlos Sauerland show against a guy with nine wins out of 25 fights that were in 2015, so been carefully matched but that would have given me fight on it that from Eddie Earn because he would match him did Caller a favour didn't they fair enough I get it boxing's a business but it's very hard to pick holes in his career but looking at it he's got three Euro level wins Galahad he's Euro level in my opinion I thought he beat him just but Galahad stunk the arena out it's like uh you know, when you go to a boxing show and somebody farts, you go, who's done that? Who were that? Well, that's what it's like when you watch Gallard fight. He doesn't engage. He's got technical skills off at charts. They are extraordinary. His skills are extraordinary, honestly. But he doesn't engage. He doesn't come to fight. He just comes to pick your pocket. And fans don't want that. He stepped it up in his last fight, Gallard, but Josh won it and beat him for me. Dennis Sayland, he run defeated, he beat him, Euro level. Took Galahad's out as well, Euro level, and as I've just spoke about, uh, who's the other one? Galahad. Sayland, and Rendell Monroe, sorry I didn't speak about him. Rendell Monroe, I think Rendell Monroe was shot then when he fought Rendell Monroe. Uh, I think he got him at the right time, beat him, so you've got to give him credit. Now, but I think he's been carefully matched, it's all been designed around getting money in. If you've had 11 fights in your own town and you do as many tickets as Josh, people are eating off that table, aren't they? They're all going to eat. His team have been eating well, haven't they? But very, very, very carefully matched. Yep, they got the Frampton fight, they got the Selby fight, but they got paid in them, didn't they? I didn't have him as favourite in the Selby fight. That were a split decision. Martinez fight. I had him favourite in that because I knew Martinez were more or less of it ill with seven defeats. That were a mandatory decision. You could make a case for him losing both of them, but home advantage counts for a lot, doesn't it? Martinez and the Selby fight home advantage to Frampton fight, he won that, he met fire with fire. So you've got to give him a lot of credit, Josh Warrington. Yeah, top five pound for pound, but we have to create a bit of controversy, don't we? But I want to see him get a fight under his belt where he's not the A-side, the own fighter. I want to see him out of his comfort zone. I don't want to see him in Leeds with knockovers. That last fight he's just fought, wore a knockover. Uh, for him 
Tanyushi, whatever you call it, that were an easy one for him. Very, very, very easy. Uh, but he's box check number one, so you've got to give him credit. Josh Warrington deserves a lot of credit. His team have done really well. But as I said, he's a massive earner and everybody's eating off the dinner table that he's providing the food for. They're all eating off it. Everybody, all his team, manager, trainer, rest of the team, promoter, they're all doing well off at the back of him. They've played that Leeds United thing down to a T, haven't they? I think that's brilliant. It's like the Ricky Atten uh, concept, isn't it? Jump on a football team and we'll do well. Probably a Leeds fan anyway, isn't he? So that's good, isn't it? He's a massive ticket seller. And I think it's a great story. He used to go around selling tickets, dropping them off and that after training back in the day when he was a dentist, I heard. So that's good. It's a great story. I want to see him in America now in a Vegas fight or I want to see him in a big pay-per-view fight in England. I want to see him against Shaka Stevenson. I think that's a great fight. But I think they're going to try and prolong that until they get to that stage. But that could be a great fight on the Tyson Fury Joshua undercard in Saudi, couldn't it? Josh won it in against Taka, Shaka Stevenson. Could even have Kel Brook Amir Khan if anybody wants to see that, but that's a bit smelly now, that, isn't it, that fight? But Stevenson, and uh, if he fights Josh Warrington, that'd be a great one on undercard, wouldn't it? And they'll all get paid, and it's a great story then, isn't it, for him? Even if he lost against Stevenson, he could cash out his career, couldn't he, at a young age in uh, Saudi? He could be out of the game at 30, undefeated with millions. So I think it's a great story. Uh, do apologise for putting him in 11 on my pound for pound list, but sometimes you just have to create a bit of controversy and get everybody debating. Or you can put pound for pound lists up like everybody else, but all they do is just copy them out of Ring Magazine. They don't try and think outside the box, and that's what I do. I think outside the box. Josh Warrington's a great fighter. If he does get a couple of losses in his career, though, and our guy Josh Whale keeps winning like he's doing, I think them two will meet and I think that's a great story. They both sparred together as kids, they know each other, so know each other very well. The dads know each other very well, doesn't it? Mick Whale against Sean O'Hagan, that would be an interesting uh, press conference, wouldn't it? <laughs> that would be very interesting. You know, you'd have Steve Wood there and Dennis Hobson, that would be interesting. You'd have me and Nick Manners going to back and forth. I've already had Nick Manners on phone uh, yesterday. Pokey, Pokey, can't put Josh Murray in 11. It's top, top five easily, top three maybe. Look, I know Nick, but I've got to do what I've got to do on a mate. Do you know what I mean? I'm a fisherman reeling them in. So, don't have nightmares. Peace out, keep on trucking. Keep sporting boxing. Josh Warrington, it's top five pound for pound. Could put any of them lads in top five in UK, couldn't you? At number one, any of them with the records, all undefeated, all great fighters. But like I said, you could say they've all been carefully matched, haven't they, really, at times. Boxing's about timing, isn't it? But it is what it is, alright? Peace out.